Hi, good evening. Thank you so much for joining me for this video Bible study. Uh, I pray as always that you are blessed and encouraged by what I'm going to share with you tonight. Um, this is uh, part two of uh, the series, The Power of Prayer. And we've been talking about uh, in the first week, the model of prayer and the model that Jesus gave us in the Lord's Prayer. And um, the big idea of this series is to explore uh, what Jesus says about prayer and the idea that prayer is simply talking to God. It's, it's uh, making time and space to let God talk to us. It's not just a, a monologue, but it's a dialogue where we speak to God and He speaks to us. Um, it's a conversation and it happens out of uh, a relationship of intimacy and there's a secret place uh, of prayer that is a void of distractions. We're going to talk about that uh, in this uh, teaching. Um, but the idea of prayer also includes praying without ceasing. And we're going to talk about what that means exactly. But um, my text that we're going to look at in this uh, video is Mark 1, verse 35, and Matthew 6, verse 6. Um, and Jesus, in teaching about prayer, He teaches us the importance of creating space of making time uh, to encounter God free from distractions. And we see that in the example of his life, um, that, that Jesus found it vitally necessary to make time for prayer, to make time for moments of unhindered, undistracted communication with God. Um, so let's look at Mark 135. I'm going to read Mark 135 and Matthew 6, verse 6, and then we'll get into uh, what these scriptures show us. Mark 1.35 says, Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out, talking about Jesus, and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. And Matthew 6, verse 6, this is Jesus teaching on prayer. And these are the words of Jesus. It says, But when you pray, go into your most private room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. That's the amplified version. There's an emphasis there on what is done. Your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Um, now, prior to Matthew 135, it's important that we get context on this passage, Mark 135. Uh, it had been a very busy day for Jesus uh, and His ministry. Um, Jesus, His headquarters of ministry was Capernaum. And Jesus spent a lot of time there, and, and the verses prior to Mark 135 uh, show us the ministry of Jesus. He was teaching in the Capernaum synagogue. Um, the Bible says that He drove out an unclean spirit in the synagogue uh, there as He was teaching. Uh, then it says that He went along and He healed Peter's mother-in-law of a fever. And then it says, basically to wrap up the day, He stayed there in the town and healed everyone in Capernaum that was sick and demon-possessed. The Bible says everyone that was brought to Jesus, everyone in the whole town, was healed of their sickness or, or demon possession. So you can imagine that Jesus, who was fully man, although He was fully God, He was fully man, He was tired. 
and uh, he needed strength, he needed energy, he needed a, a pick-me-up, if you will, after this long day of ministry. Um, but even after the events of a long, busy day, the Bible says that Jesus didn't oversleep, so to speak, when it came to prayer. He, he rested, but the Bible says that he didn't take time to sleep in. He didn't take time to say, well, man, yesterday was so long, I need, I need to just sleep it off. Jesus understood that something more important than sleep was his spirit being filled with the power and the presence of God, and that came through prayer. And it says there in, um, in Mark, a long while before daylight, um, early in the morning, basically. Um, now, Here's the thing, a lot, of, a lot of things compete for our attention uh, once daylight comes. And once the day gets busy, there's a lot of things that come and interfere with our schedule, if you will. A lot of things compete for our attention. But it's important, again, and we see this in the example of Jesus, it's important that we make time for uninterrupted, undistracted communication with God, even if it takes a long while before daylight, even if you have to get up earlier than you normally do. It's very important that we make time to, to, to be with God and to, to talk with Him undistracted. You know, we're, we're going to talk more about praying without ceasing, what an attitude of prayer is throughout the day. But we all need to make time as believers. Our, the source of our power is not the food we eat. The source of our strength is not um, the things of this world that give us um, joy, so to speak, but the source of our power, the source of our ability is, is communion with God, is communication with Him, and we need to make time for that uninterrupted, undistracted communication with God. And that sometimes that happens in the morning. You know, I've heard a lot of people that have talked about getting up early in the morning. At, at, I mean, wee hours in the morning. We're talking at 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and God speaks to them. And I, I believe there's something in that that... that there's nothing else competing for our attention at those times. Our, our brains have kind of stopped uh, thinking about everything so to, uh, for the most part, and uh, God can really speak clearly. And I've heard so many stories of God speaking to people through the night and even speaking to people in dreams because we're not distracted by other things. There's something to that. And, um, and here's the thing. We, we not only need to create a, a quiet place, but we also must cultivate a quiet heart before God. It's one thing to have a quiet place, but it's another thing to have a quiet heart, to be able to quiet your heart before Him, quiet your mind, quiet your spirit. Even in a quiet place, we can have a phone or something that's still there to distract. We have to quiet our heart, not just quiet the place. But it says here that Jesus found a solitary place, a solitary place. Um, you know, and this is just a, a just kind of a practical historical aspect of this. In the time of Jesus, most homes, and we even see it now in some neighborhoods where you got homes that are really close together, most homes were tightly packed together, and the villages uh, along the Sea of Galilee were close together. Um, and finding privacy in the midst of so many people requiring attention. Pic I mean, picture this. You're, this is Jesus we're talking about. Everybody wanted to see Jesus. Everybody wanted to get a glimpse of Jesus. Everybody wanted to ask Jesus to heal them and take care of their need. And there are so many people requiring uh, attention from Jesus. But this required for Him to find a, a place to pray, a place to be alone, a place of solitude. It required getting up before everyone else did. And before all of that stuff started bombarding you. And in that culture, normally at sunrise, even today, we could say even in our day, um, depending on the time of the year, very practically, this averaged between 5.30, 6.30 a.m., uh, getting up early in the morning before the hustle and the bustle. And Jesus teaches us, again, here in this example, that while sleep is important, while our bodies most certainly need rest, it's important that we get the actual physical rest that we need. That's important to our physical health. Uh, but our spiritual rest, our strength, and our power comes from consistent, meaningful conversation with God. And Jesus understood this. Jesus had just had a busy day the day before in Capernaum. He healed power. When I, you can imagine that, that a whole day of just healing people, he, he was exhausted. But he needed a spiritual strength that he can only get from communication and conversation with God. So here's, here's three things that I kind of wrote down here in the notes to remember. 
And those three things are this. Number one, it's important to seek God before the day's problems and busy schedule takes over your thoughts. Because again, there's so many things that, that take uh, our attention away from prayer. We get busy, we get into the mode of the day, and then before we know it, it's nighttime, and we've forgotten to say, hey, how you doing to God? Uh, it happens to all of us at some point or another, but it's important to seek God before the day's problems and the busy schedule takes over your thoughts. Number two, it's important to remember to withdraw from noise and distractions so you can focus on God. You know, you can't really pray if the TV's gone. You can't really pray if your kids are screaming in your ear. And I know it's sometimes hard to get away from your kids. Some of us parents do it, and uh, we try to hide from our kids in the bathroom, of all places, um, just for a moment's peace. But we have to try our best to withdraw from noises and distract. Turn your phone off. Put your phone on Do Not Disturb, whatever you got to do. But um, pull yourself away from distractions so that you can focus on God and you're not focused on the Facebook feed or the news feed or the TV or the ball game or whatever it is. Withdraw yourself from the noise and distractions. And the third thing we have to remember is we have to uh, we have to take Jesus's regular attitude of focused communion with God. If Jesus did it, we should do it. The Bible says we're to be like Christ, and if Christ did it, if Christ found it important, if Christ found it necessity uh, a necessity to His ministry and to His life and to His walk, we need to do the same. Um, and here's the thing. Prayer is what equip, uh, equipped Jesus to teach, to preach, to heal, and to cast out demons. That's where he got his power from. He got his power from his prayer. He got his power from the, what he received in prayer from God. He got his instruction from God through prayer. Uh, consistent prayer. Here's the thing. Some of us, you know, we want to do ministry and we want to help people and we want to be, uh, you know, used of the Lord but we're void of a prayer life. But consistent prayer is the key to consistent, effective ministry. If we want to uh, be consistently effective and consistently fruitful, we have to be consistently prayerful. Every, uh, I, I believe that every great move of God, every, every great move of God that we've seen throughout history started with prayer. And every great move of God moving forward will be out of prayer. God moves in prayer. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. So we're looking for God to do things. We're looking for God to be effective through us, but we're void of a prayer life. But consistent prayer is the key. And then Jesus would talk about, not, He would show us not only do we need solitary places. And here's the thing, isolation and solitude are totally different. Isolation pulls us away to focus on ourselves. Solitude pulls us away to focus on God. And so let's, let's not confuse the two. We can't isolate and think about God. Because when you isolate, you think about yourself. When you, when you take on an attitude of isolation, you're worried about yourself. You isolate because you feel one way or another about a person or about God and you pull away from Him. But we need to be in solitude with God to find a place of solitude free of distraction. Just wanted to throw that in there. But Jesus gives us this example of finding a solitary place to, to have undistracted communication with God. But then He also tells us in Matthew 6 that we read before to find a secret place. A secret place. Um, he says, go into your most private room, your most private room. Uh, prior to verse 6, uh, Jesus instructed against praying openly uh, as the Pharisees did, so their prayers would be heard by others. Jesus was, uh, was, was telling His disciples earlier in this chapter that you shouldn't pray like the Pharisees do, looking to be heard by others and praying these big, long prayers that they can be seen by men and be uh, you know, praised for how well they pray openly. But what Jesus was saying was, um, don't be like these Pharisees. Uh, you know, at the set time of prayer during, during this day and time, uh, pious Jews would stop what they were doing and pray. And some would do it discreetly, but others with, with this pretentious display to make themselves appear that they are holy and that they are more accepted by God because they pray these big, long prayers. And some of us can feel that way. Even in our day, we can feel like the more words we use and the more uh, Elizabethan English that we use and the more King James speak that we use that God hears us. And this is exactly what Jesus is teaching against, is this pretentious 
prayer life. Um, uh, now, very practically, a private room, when you hear the term private room, a private room uh, would be a room that had no doors or windows to the building's exterior. In other words, find a place where nobody can see you. It might You might feel like because the door is shut, it's private, but uh, there's still somebody that could peek in and hear, and there's the temptation to make that person feel like you're more holy because you have this grand prayer. But what he's, what he's saying is find a private place. Now, most people, uh, especially in this day, would have lacked their own room. So this private room would have been a closet, and that's why some translations use closet uh, when it refers to this. It would have been a closet or a storage room, literally the pantry, <laughs> the kitchen pantry, if you will. Uh, so just kind of sub that in there. Go into your kitchen pantry uh, where nobody can hear you. There's no doors or windows and pray. Go into your bedroom closet with all of your clothes and shoes. Think about it. But this is the imagery that Jesus is giving us. Find a secret place where only God sees and only God knows. Um, now, Jesus was not condemning public prayer. I want, I want that to be clear. Jesus was not condemning public prayer. Uh, it, it, the Bible actually gives us examples of where Jesus uh, had open prayers. When He blessed the food that He fed uh, thousands of people with, He prayed openly. So He wasn't speaking against public prayer, but he was teaching against pious, pretentious, um, overly done, overly repetitious public prayer. Prayer should not be this thing where we try to get glory from man and try to impress people. Prayer should be between us and God. Uh, this, the central issue at, at play here is really the internal motivation of a person's heart. And the Bible says that only God knows the heart, but um, though public prayer has a value, there's a lot of value in public prayer. Uh, prayer completely away from public view allows a person to focus more exclusively on God. You know, I've experienced it before when, I, when I'm asked to, to say a prayer openly in public. I, I try my best to have a lowliness of heart and a humility when I pray and lead people in prayer. But at the same time, there's always that temptation to try and impress people. And it might not be this grand, glorious temptation, uh, but but it's subtle, and it and it is a temptation nonetheless to, to you know, I I got to make this thing sound really good because people think I'm spiritual, and they they obviously think I'm spiritual enough to lead a prayer and and to pray publicly, so I've got to make this thing sound really good. And therein lies the temptation to please man rather than pleasing God. We have to be really careful of that. Not that public prayer shouldn't be done. We should definitely. Uh, pray together publicly, but it's a matter of our heart and who we're trying to please. Are we trying to please man? Or are we trying to please God? Um, and that's the idea, is that we pray to seek God's approval and not man's, because Jesus said, your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So our heart should be toward Him. When we're talking to Him, it should be to Him not to anybody else. Our prayer should be to Him. It shouldn't be spoken to Him. And well, let me see how many people I can impress with this. But it's it's to Him. And when He sees it, He'll reward it openly. Um, so what is prayer? Ultimately, what is prayer? What is this prayer we're talking about? Well, prayer, very simply, is the idea of inviting God into our circumstances. Inviting Him into our circumstances, into our hopes, into our fears, into our dreams, and into our pain. It's inviting God into our lives, into every aspect. God doesn't want to just be a part of our life. He wants to be our life. He wants to have, have input and have, um, have influence in every part of our life, our circumstances, our hopes, our fears, our dreams, our pain. Prayer is an opportunity to, inv to invite God into every situation. Um, now, here's what prayer isn't. Prayer is not uh, this idea of working through a grocery list of things that we need and um, or that we desire God to perform or answer that we expect Him to. You know, prayer is not manipulating God to do what we desire Him to. Prayer is laying our requests for, before Him, but, but realizing that they are just that. They are requests. 
We are asking God, appealing to His mercy and compassion to meet those needs, but prayer should not be formulated and built just on those times where we need something, but prayer should be conversation when we just love God, when we love Him enough to talk to Him and, and, and invite Him into our lives, not just when we need things, but when we just want to say, God, I love you and I thank you so much for what you've blessed me with and I'm content with what I have now. Um, prayer allows us the opportunity to live relationally with God. When we have communi communion and, and communication with Him, we have a relationship with Him. You know, I have a relationship with my wife, not just because I live in the same house, but we communicate, we talk. Um, granted, we have our disagreements, we have our, our issues, but you have relationship with people that you talk to. Uh, you can't really have relationship with people that you never talk to. And so you can't say, I have a relationship with God when you never talk to Him, when you never allow Him to speak to you through His Word. Prayer is that opportunity to live relationally with God and invite Him into our circumstances. And when we do that, Jesus says, we need to find a solitary place. We need to take, cut out all the noise, focus on God, focus on His voice, focus on that communi communion with Him, and we need to find a secret place. Don't worry about people. Don't worry about what man thinks. Don't worry about impressing other people with your prayers. But find that place with God and God that sees in secret. He will answer your prayer according to His will and according to His goodness and mercy. So that's what Jesus teaches us about the secret place of prayer. We have to find moments entering into this secret place free from people, free from email, free from social media and other distractions, and we can encounter Father God. We can encounter Him and invite Him into our circumstances and see His goodness in a more real, relational way. That's the source of our power and strength as a believer, is our prayer with God. And Jesus encourages us to find this secret place of prayer. I want to close out this teaching with a prayer that God would help us uh, in what we've learn tonight. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity of prayer. And I thank you that you give us uh, some very practical and, and insightful things in your word in regards to prayer. I thank you for the example of Jesus that teaches us that even more important than sleep is to our physical bodies, prayer is important to our spiritual bodies, our, our spiritual souls. God, I pray that you'd help us to find those solitary places, not places of isolation where we withdraw from you and think about ourselves, but where we withdraw to you in solitude and, and think about you and, and, and allow prayer to be the, the vehicle to have more meaningful relationship with you. God, I pray that you would help each and every person to find that secret place where we close the door, we forget about distractions, we put aside the busyness, of the day, the schedule. We put aside man's opinion and what man thinks about our prayers and we just pray and we bear our hearts to you and we, we allow you to speak to us. And God, we know that when we do that, you're faithful. You're faithful to hear us, you're faithful to answer, you're faithful to reward our prayers openly when we pray sincerely in secret and in solitude with you. God, I pray that you would help us to find the secret place of prayer and the power of prayer. Help us to understand more and more that you want to be invited into our circumstances, into our hopes, into our lives, into every aspect. You don't just want to be a part of our life, but you want to be everything in our life. God, help us to apply what we've heard tonight and give us grace to pray and to hear from you. We thank you so much for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope this teaching has encouraged you. I hope that you will like the video and share it with your friends and family on your page. But may the Lord continue to bless and keep you, make His face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord show you His favor and give you His peace. Until next time, we pray that you have a great rest of your week and a great uh, time of prayer as you find the secret place. I hope that you'll join us this weekend for a time of worship together, 1030 a.m. Sunday morning. We're also streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. God bless you. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.